Hi guys, welcome back to Sam Talks Cars. Something a little different this time for sort of like a midweek highlight. I'm stuck in lockdown. I've got a Nissan GTR sat on my drive. So I thought, do you know what? Let's have a little walk around. I want to talk to you guys about the car, give you a bit of an introduction to it, because I must admit, it is my car. It's my daily driver. So there's going to be quite a bit of content around it. So hopefully you enjoy this. Let me know your thoughts below. Thanks. So this is an early R35 GTR. It's a 59 plate. So it's still within the first year of the GTR launch in the UK. Quoted power figures were somewhere between 479 and 485 horsepower at the crank, I believe. This car, though, is a Seven Valley Motorsports Stage 4 tune, so it's kicking out around 630 brake horsepower, and it's got a lot of aftermarket parts to do so. Um, somewhere in that sort of area, in the engine part, we've got 1100cc ASNU injectors. Uh, we look down here, we've got some 3-inch intakes, and if you look here, you'll see there's nothing... Nothing plugged in there. There's no mass airflow sensor as it has these lovely GFB blow off valves, which don't just sound great, but they're vent to atmosphere. So the boost isn't recirculated into the engine, it just spits it out to the atmosphere. Sounds great, gets rid of boost, does many other things I'm sure. But um, yeah, the car's got these added pieces. It's also got a full three and a half inch jap speed exhaust. When I bought the car in January, it came with a three inch Miltec exhaust. It was resonated. Um, and with the GTR making so much noise from the, from the tyres, even though it's only on Pilot Sport 4S, the tyre roar it is almost offensive in the cabin. So I wanted to not just increase the exhaust note and add a bit of character to the vehicle, I wanted to drown out tyre noise at the same time. So I've now got a three and a half inch exhaust. Um, if you look to my left, you'll now see some lovely three inch decatted downpipes just there. They're ready to go on as soon as lockdown's finished. They should give me an extra 30 or 40 brake horsepower, which will take my car to a stage four and a quarter tune in the UK. To our American friends, that's everything for full bolt-on, apart from an intercooler, which is entirely optional. But with it being an early car, it has uh, smaller inlets to the turbos. So realistically, it'd be maxed out around 650 to 670 at the crank. Uh, the DBA cars, which came along in 2012, could maybe make 680 to 690 in an absolute push, but that's purely because of the bigger turbo inlets. And now we come to the interior. So this is a premium edition GTR. So you obviously get the black bolstered, leather bolstered seats. You get the Bose sound system. So you can see that in there. And I think there's a massive amp in the back. Yep, there it is. So yeah, the seats are in quite good condition to be fair. I'm very pleased with this vehicle. Um, when I purchased it, it had 76,400 miles. But it's, it wears them with pride, you know, it's an honest car, it's got marks here and there, but nothing nothing to the detriment. Seats are quite nice, driver's bolster's got a bit of wear, but you know, feed the leather, it shouldn't be too bad. So yeah. With this being an early CBA, this is when the GTR was probably, you could argue, its best value. This car I have the paperwork for was ordered at a cost of £54,200. So if you put that into context, it's probably still under £60,000 now. And realistically, back in 2009, I can't think of anything really that would rival a GTR for the money. Because the E92 M3 was a 50 grand car. And this was faster 0 to 60 by, I think, a second. I'm sure these were around 3.5 seconds. The E92 M3 and Audi RS4 were around 4.8. Uh, the GTR was faster top speed. It was obviously a lot, lot faster around tracks. Certainly the Nürburgring. The GTR really was great bang for your buck. I mean, you could take on a Porsche 911 Turbo and you were paying effectively a third of the price. It's a little bit of a shame that now the EBA advancements have come out in 2017 that the GTR is actually quite an expensive car, which I'm really sad to report because it's, it's killing the market for them massively. These things were all over the place in 2009, 2010. I don't think I've seen a My17 out yet. It's quite sad, but if you were charging me £72,000 for one second hand, I think I'd be a bit miffed as well. So, a bit of an interesting point with this car, actually, is um, if you look down the front, down there, you see a carbon fibre front lip. And, yes, you can probably see some of the imperfections in some of the floors, but I made that by hand. It took me about three days, I think, 
the, the original finished in that sort of grey wheel sort of colour in that side skirt. It was all the same sort of colour. And this poor thing, bless it, was absolutely battered. I'm sure it had argued with every curbstone in Middlesbrough or wherever up north it was residing. It punched pretty much every curb while trying to parallel park, I think, bless it. It was all damaged, it was all cracked, so I took some genuine carbon fibre cloth, some resin, some epoxy and some lacquer, and I, I set about making my own. This is a budget supercar, it's not because I can't afford to run it, it's because I want to try and prove to people that you don't have to bankrupt yourself to run a GTR. So yeah, a little bit of trivia for you. Carbon fibre lip. I'll attach the link in the description to show you how to make one. Now we come to the back end, where my most prized possession and my proudest modification sits down here. The three and a half jap speed exhaust, which comes into five inch carbon fiber tips. I've been a massive fan of carbon fiber, you can probably tell by the front lip I made. But um, yeah, so look at these. They're not absolutely mint, they've got a few miles on them, but this whole exhaust system cost me under 500 pounds. Cobwebs, but it's valves. I, I don't use them, but you know, if I ever wanted to call it, I could attach the valves. Yeah, nice carbon fibre tips. They go to a nice burnt copper finish on the inside when they're actually clean for you know five minutes or so, and then you use it. But yeah, gives a nice deep tone to the back of the car. Sort of makes everything look a bit more aggressive, a bit classier. And for five hundred quid, you can't really save the fare of the Mac, can you? something everybody forgets about these cars is when you turn it on this whole screen here is touchscreen which back in 2009 was absolutely phenomenal I had a b7 audi rs4 before this and i was only two years older and none of the tech was touchscreen yes the things were finished to a better quality the leather was a bit better there was no cheap you know no this cheap plastic everything in my rs4 was carbon fiber but there's leather there's leather on the dash there's leather on the seats I'm really cool, so I've got a fire extinguisher, which I really, fingers crossed, I don't need to use, but you know, it's cool to tell people your car's got a fire extinguisher, I think. But yeah, it's not as bad as everybody makes them out to be. I mean, it's not a luxury car and the ride is absolutely awful, but interior quality is not, not as bad as I thought. we come to the corners so as you can see these are clearly not standard wheels these are called TSW Nürburgring alloys they're forged like the OEM equivalent I think they're forged pretty sure they're forged uh, they're very lightweight and they're slightly wider as well so even though I'm running the same rubber I had on my standard wheels you can see the Pilot Sport 4S is there I've got a 265 width at the front I've got 305 at the rear the fronts of the TSW Nürburgrings are 20 inches by 10, so again, half an inch of width there. But they do feel lighter, actually. I have driven the car, I think, 10 miles since I had them fitted because of this lockdown and all that. But we look a little bit further down the car, you can see a bit more dish in that rear wheel. A little bit more shape to it. That's an inch wider than the front there, 10.5 inch. And I've got 305 inch, 305 millimeter, sorry. Michelin's back there. They give it a nice planted feel, um, but I will admit, with them being so wide, the car does tend to aquaplane a little bit. And you're probably looking at the discs as well. A little bit of surface rust there is, well, we seem to get beaming beautiful sunshine like this, and then it randomly rains for two, three days, and the car goes really dirty and rusty and crap. But yeah, these are Alcons all the way around. Um, they're a bit more money. I think they're about 700 pounds or something plus VAT. Uh, for the fronts and then I think, I think similar for the rear. They're floating bells and they're C-hooked as you can see. The Brembos have a very similar issue to the Audi RS4 ones where they're drilled and they crack. So if you take them on track or if you do some heavy heavy road driving with them you can end up with a lot of nasty cracks and they did just fall to bits really and these Alcons are supposed to last up to three times as long so I was, I was fortunate enough to buy this car with them but I have just bought another set of fronts for when these are 
worn out. Great set of brakes, really great feel through the pedal. No, no tremor, no trembling or anything. They feel good, feel solid. Um, but I must admit, you are stopping one and three quarter tons of car. So they do still have a propensity to get some heat in them and not warp, but you get a bit of a soft pedal after some heavy punishment. Good brakes though, definitely worth the money in my opinion. So guys, I just want to thank you all for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed having a good look around the GTR today. Uh, I'm going to add a few pictures um, from when I did last go out and get a few miles under its belt on the new wheels. Took a few pictures, which hopefully you'll enjoy. And at the end of the video, I'll attach um, I'll attach a little clip from when I lent the car to CarWow and we absolutely launched it up a runway. We didn't go with launch control to protect the gearbox and the fact that it has got 78,000 miles on it, whether it's got a Litchfield clutch upgrade or not. It's always good to have a little mechanical sympathy, in my opinion. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!